principal architect, principal architect here at Aki Workshop. And this is our third webinar, a series that we're doing to kind of like bring, um, you know, focus towards you know, responsible hillside living. Um, today we have Miss Lauren Peters joining us to talk about the benefits of switching to solar. Now, Miss Lauren Peters is affectionately dubbed the first lady of solar in the yeah. um, She's among a handful of women leading the charge for sustainable future in the region. Um, she manages, um, she's, she's the managing director of um, New One Security and Solar Systems, which, her, which is her own homegrown installation and cons consultation firm with global appeal. Um, the company specializes in re renewable energy alternatives and is regionally, and re regionally provides for photovoltaic solutions, solar Wi-Fi, solar power security, and solar water heater. She, um, her company's growing focus on renewable migration is a public education campaign that aims to inspire, educate, and empower household and community across the region, particularly those that are most vulnerable. So that's why I thought it would be, it would be very appropriate to have her here to share the platform and talk to us about solar power. So Ms. Lauren, thank you for joining us. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Robert. I am so happy to be here to share some of the information that I have acquired throughout my experience with you all and definitely highlighting this week as Friday would be it day and we're celebrating investing in our planet. Okay, I'm gonna make you to share my screen. Lovely. So everyone is seeing my screen? Yes, we see your screen. Yes. Okay, awesome. So hello again, everyone. I am Lauren Peters, I'm the first lady of Nuance Solar, where we let the sun be a power. And today we are going to get more information on the benefits of going solar, why solar systems are important to us. Um, we're going to talk more about some incentives and some initiatives. And really and truly, it is an interactive session so that I can understand your needs, your concerns about solar systems. And we are really focusing on Trinidad and Tobago because I could only speak on, on this island and whatever, Further information that you all want, you could put it in the chat and um, we could discuss it later on. So if you all didn't know more about Aki Workshop, Aki Workshop focuses on responsible hillside living and the company's aim is to build an environment that nurtures the value of the design and hopes on educating communities and ensuring the focus on that particular design and transforming the surroundings. So that responsible hillside living is perfect for solar because living on the hillside, you, it is somewhat remote areas. And our vision, the one solar vision is to provide the most compelling value in the renewable energy sector. That is beneficial for everyone. And we emphasize mostly on a greener planet for our future generation, and we commit to zero emissions, all right? So we do have some polls that I would want to get feedback from you all, and then we would look at the results from those polls. I will share a little more about me. Some of you all may know me personally, and some may know me professionally. I have 13 years of experience in electrical engineering technology. 
um, hands-on experience in engineering and design, my qualifications from Solar Energy Institute and the University of Trinidad and Tobago. I am one of the members of the Wildman's Association of Trinidad and Tobago. And since 2019, since we started No One Solar, we have assisted homeowners and businesses in over 50,000 watts of renewable energy throughout the country. I am an alumni of the Association for Women Entrepreneurs and Island um, Innovation Ambassador. And I teach and share all the knowledge all about energy, renewable energy. So our first poll, right. So our first poll that was launched we launched the first poll already. Okay. And yes, it's up. Okay, so the answers are now up. And we've seen some answers coming in. We are looking at the question of what is really your main reason of thinking about going solar? And I am seeing a few more answers coming in. And there we have it. I'm seeing that a lot of you all are really motivated to go solar because you want to save on your electric bill. <laughs> so it shows that a lot of you have high electric bills and the alternative energy source is the solar energy. And of course, I am seeing that you all are really concerned, which is a good thing, about the impact on the environment. It's really good to hear. So we, so, right, so share the results. So you see the results there that there are a lot of people looking to save on their electric bill. So I'm going to share with you all more about how you can save on your electric bill by going to solar. So we do have a problem and, Are you all seeing the next slide? All right. So we do have a problem. And our problem today is the impact on our environment, basically. And we are seeing that our non-renewable energy resources, such as our natural oils and gas, have that impact with high carbon emissions. They have a lot of land and marine pollution. And these non renewable energy resources cannot keep up with our demand and our consumption. Yes, we humans are using a lot and we are running out of these resources. Um, there are little reserves for oil, gas, and we don't use coal, but these are idea of what other countries use. And we are really low on these reserves. But we are transitioning into using renewable energy and that migration into renewable energy. And we have an abundant source of these resources that are filled with sunlight is an indefinite source of sunlight. We have a lot of wind power as well. Um, we use geothermal and hydro, but locally in Trinidad, we, fo we focus on sunlight, which is the solar and the wind. I believe there is another, right. So we have another poll that just before we enter into the presentation. So you could put up the poll question number three. So the reasons for going solar is not just because we, yes, we want to save on the electric bill. We want to find a reliable source of energy because our grid suppliers aren't really keeping up with the demand that we have and with the technology. So the reason that a lot of countries are moving into renewable energy is because at a point in time, um, there were a lot of world leaders. They agreed to 17 goals. They are called the sustainable goals. And we need to implement these goals by 2030. We are in 2022, so you know 
how much years we have to implement some of these goals. These goals range from no poverty, zero hunger. We have responsible energy consumption, gender equality, and we also focus on life on land, climate changes, and of course, we're looking at life below water. And we are looking at partnerships or partnering with institutions and building responsible communities. But we're focusing today on goal number seven, which is affordable, clean energy for all. So we have to ensure that this clean energy is reliable and it is sustainable for everyone. So we could launch poll number two, which is the next question. Okay. So we're looking at this poll. Will you invest in a solar system? Well, the answers are coming in. And when we hear about investment, we think about how much money we're gonna spend and our return on investment after some time. That is what we're looking at. And some hearsay says that it can be pretty, you know, expensive, but it can be affordable because we are making these solutions pretty attractive for individuals to change over to renewable energy. So we are seeing here that the returns on the investment are more attractive. So that's why that you will invest in these solar systems and we should be making it more affordable for you all. Some of you all are looking into getting government incentives. There are some, but we will get to that further on in the presentation. So, So why go solar? So when we hear about solar, a lot of individuals don't understand the process. They really think that it's just solar panels. And they would call and ask me, Lauren, how many solar panels for a whole house? Or how many solar panels to run a fridge or X, Y, Z, or the size of the house? But I really tell people that it's more than just solar panels. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have to have a combination of electronics merged together to have that supply for your home. And it all, goes, it all goes with how much you are consuming the appliances that you're using and if they, are, if they are energy efficient. So solar systems really work by their, the panels are capturing the sunlight or the light rays and they turn into electricity, but they are DC power and that is a different type of electricity, we store or we harness that electrical supply into batteries. And from that battery, from that DC power, it goes via an inverter system, which converts the DC power to AC. And that's how you power up your home. So you need all these components to even to help start with your transition. So when someone says how many panels, yeah, is what size of system you really need to understand to have and supply your home with so you can power up all your appliances. Awesome. So we're looking at our, the benefits, our first benefit, we get right into it, the first benefit of going solar is definitely the impact on our environment. You can see with the changes when we were all inside for 
um, lockdown that our seas were much more cleaner, the air was, was much more cleaner, and we could see that somehow Trinidad is always saved by the no, no, a lot of storms and hurricanes were always spared by that, and and other country, uh, other countries have had these natural disasters. The impact on our environment is really important because these carbon emissions that we are emitting from using oil and gas, it is really high. So the impact on our environment will help us reduce these greenhouse gases by going solar. Even for the exploration on oil and gas, um, that is very costly and it will you know, hamper our seas, it will hamper our land um, facilities. So it really reduces the strain on hydrocarbons and of course we'll have lower pollution on our land and in our air and in our seas. The next benefit we're looking at is having an independent energy source. And the independent energy source means that now you are able to have your energy storage. You're able to use how much you, you want to use at your, your pace. And you're able to have really a resilient communities. Let's just say for what happened in February at the blackout, if you have had one of these solar systems, you're able to still be in the comfort of your home. The communities wouldn't be black and be unsafe. And of course, your investment that you make into the solar system, it will always remain at that rate. That initial rate, it will always remain the same. They wouldn't have any government or anything just changing up these prices on you. So you know for X amount of years, your returns on your investment will remain the same. So having this independent energy source is really perfect for and beneficial for your solar system. So when we're looking at another benefit, we are looking at increasing our property value of our residents and our businesses. So we're looking to have energy efficient buildings. And of course, that added investment that you have just put towards your building or your home, it raises the value. So if you're looking to sell your home in the future, it already have a, that in higher initial value, that selling value that you would normally have it with the, um, with the grid supply. It also gives you a safer, secured property because in case of emergencies and then these poles fall down in case of hurricane, you now will already have these solar system powering up your home, powering up your property, and now you will feel a little more secured and safe in your environment. We could launch pool, the last pool. Pool number three. All right, so we're looking at how people think about energy efficiency and your attitude towards renewable energy. Is it something that you're really interested in? Is it something that you could care less about? We really want to know that if you're interested in doing the renewable migration. And if you're passionate about some of these benefits, beneficial for you, your future and your family. So some of these choices that I see a lot of people are saying they don't know how to start and Nuance Solar assists you with the idea or the knowledge of going into renewable energy. So this is a start by this webinar for you understanding the benefits. You now will have to understand what is your energy consumption at home. If you that you are able, your property to go solar. So a lot of you have already started changing 
your lighting system into LEDs, which is really good. And what about energy efficient appliances like the air conditioned inverter, air conditioned units and gas dryers? Those are some of the appliances or even solar water heaters. Those are some of the appliances that you can now change or when they go bad, because I wouldn't want you to just change out everything. <laughs> when they go bad, you can now purchase the solar system, the solar lighting and the solar water heater. So don't worry about if you have, you don't have a clue to start, we're here to guide you along the way. Right. So, okay, so we talked about increasing our property value and last but not least, the whole reason we're looking to switch to solar, it is definitely because we're looking to reduce our electric bill. Yes, it is high. It is the most compelling value in the Caribbean region, the rates that we have in Trinidad and Tobago, but that is slowly changing. And when you convert or you switch to solar, your reduction in your electric bill is immediate. Um, you can have a standalone system or an off-grid system, so you completely cut off the grid supply by buy by monthly bills. T and Tech, no, we don't need you any longer. I am managing my consumption. I am using solar, and I am having I am having that impact on the environment. So you can have both grid supply, and you can have your solar system as well. And with that solar system, it will assist in lowering your electric bill. And here's how it it, it does that. Um, you can have some of the items such as your lighting refrigerators, mostly 110 devices on the solar system and your kilowatt hour usage will, re, will decrease. And because it have that decrease, you will pay a lower rate from, your, from TN Tech basically. And by merging all of that, purchasing or implementing energy efficient appliances with the energy star rating, Go, when you go and purchase in a new appliance, look at the wattage. Look and see how, how long you're going to use it, how much appliances you're using per day or by month or by monthly, so that your, your rates would be lower. You could use the management tools that they have. TNTEC have a management tool that you can set so that you wouldn't pass a certain amount of money that you have to pay in your electric bill. Good. So the next step is, so we look at some of these benefits and the next juicy part is the incentives and the initiatives that our government of Trinidad and Tobago have assisted us into using or lowering our consumption and merging solar systems into your home. So we see we have some, so you can integrate solar lighting in your perimeter um, an outdoor, you can use it indoor as well. And your car parts and in agriculture, we are looking to merge agri systems with photovoltaics so that in remote areas, you can have the energy supply that you need from these standalone systems. I believe there is one more poll and you can launch that one, Rachel. Okay, so we're looking at which solar devices that you all are more interested in. So we have an array of devices that you can use, which is the solar lighting, solar water heaters, and solar cameras for, for remote areas, um, solar power system to power up or all your devices at home. And we even have solar water pumps. So we're seeing some answers coming in there. 
And a lot of you all are interested in the off-grid systems or the solar powered systems. I would just let you all know that you have to have the energy storage in Trinidad. We could only have standalone systems for now. And hopefully that will change um, to have the interconnection and that you wouldn't need to have that large battery pack, but you'll be able to have the benefits of the lower, lower in your electric grid. So many of you all are interested in these solar powered systems and it's so unfortunate that no one <laughs> are interested in the solar water heaters. But that is one of the, that is one of the incentives. As you see here, there are many solar products that are available, solar water heaters, pumps, cameras, and you can use them remotely and these will assist in your electric bill. So, so an incentive that we have is the solar water heater. So seeing that none of you all were interested, you actually get 100% rebate when you purchase a solar water heater in general and to be real. Um, you have two different types, the flat panel and evacuated tube, but it's only up to $10,000. If you spend $10,000, you will, get a tax break up to 100%. So your heating device, your tank or tankless, it uses a lot of, the heating element uses a lot of power and even your air conditioned units. So switching to the solar water heaters will assist tremendously. Another incentive that we have is from TN Tech. And if your bill is less than $300, you will get 35%. So they're giving you back for being a responsible citizen and using less power and you get back 35% rebate on your bill. And you see the blackout that we have, a lot of people didn't know about this, but you hit a claim back for your losses. For homeowners, you can claim and get back up to $60 and for businesses, you claim and get back up to $600. So that was from the nationwide blackout. They actually saying, you know what, we're sorry. Here's $60 to, and businesses, here's $600. But that, there's a process for that. And um, I would share the link and information where you can start the process. So those are what are some of the incentives. And we are happy to at least share the information on the benefits, some of the benefits of going solar and the transition into renewable energy. Um, we focus on the impact on the environment, which of course we want a sustainable future for our children and for us as we get older to be comfortable. We're looking at having an, an energy independence um, we, of course, want to own properties and have that everlasting high value for our properties. And the number one reason of going solar is to reduce our electric bill so we can have more monies in our pocket to spend and put it to where we want to enjoy. So I want you to think about your future, to think about having little or no electric bills. Think about a safe and secure environment with less hassle and you're gonna have all the trails. So when you think about climate change, you really have to, it really starts with you. Implementing solar systems is just one. Um, there are so many other things that we can start to do. Um, it merges with using less power, um, being, energy independent and I want you to, when you think of the future, you think of new on solar because we let the sun be your power. <laughs> so that is my presentation today for you all and those are some of the benefits of going solar. You can find more about the company and what we do, supply, install and maintain on www.nuonesolar.com. You can find us on all social media platforms and 
we definitely would answer your questions and start the transition for you all to go into renewable energy, into solar systems. So if you have some, co some comments that you'd like to make, if you want to further reach out to us, you could reach out to Robert or myself, and we will ha be happy to assist you. Great, thanks. Thank you, Lauren. We have quite a few questions that came in. Um, we have one in from uh, Christopher, who's asking if um, powered households are able to, to give back energy to the power grid. Is this available within Trinidad? Because this is something that they do in the United States. Well, that's a really good question, but we aren't to that level. We haven't reached to that level of feeding back to the grid. There's no interconnection. Um, we don't have those regulations as yet. Hopefully, as the sustainable as we go on, the sustainable goals is to implement at least 30% by 2030. So we should see some initiatives happening, but we can't we can't interconnect to the grid or get any type of rebates from using more power. Yeah. Excellent. Um, another one here from Damien. Do we have to get clearance on TNTIC to have a uh, solar system? Okay, so at standalone solar systems, no, you don't have to get any clearance from TNTEC. We do offer getting inspection certificates from government electrical inspectorate. They more or less check to see that your, your design and your system is in, it, it, it goes with the Wireman's Code, the National Electric Code, and you no, know, you don't need that. You don't need the clearance from TNTEC because we're not feeding back to the grid. We're not feeding back to their systems and they will have a lot of safety devices and isolators on the standalone systems. Great. Another one here from Christopher. Seeing as Trinidad is a tropical country with high humidity, what is your method of cooling the solar panels themselves as it's known that excessive heat is an enemy of solar modules? So the solar modules that we use, basically, um, they have this white backing to help with the cooling. The racking that we use allow the airflow, so it will have cooling and ventilation. We ground off these systems, and we also add lighting arresters or surge protectors, so it will protect the other electronics in your in, in the system, basically. So the racking will assist with the cooling, the airflow, and uh, the type of modules that we're using, which is German engineered, it all depends on high efficiency, that will be really beneficial and it will be sustainable for the roofing and the temperatures in our country. Excellent. Um, this is another one from Satyam. What is the average lifespan of a solar PV system? That's, that's a really good question. Um, our solar system lifespan is really different because there are so much different components. You get solar panels that can last from 20 to 20 years. Um, that is normal use. And I'm not saying if we don't have any type of natural disaster, these, these panels can last 20 to 25 years. Um, other components such as the batteries can last you eight to 10 years. We have different types of batteries. You have flooded cells, you have lithium ion batteries, you have um, AGM batteries. So they, they are different lifespans, especially from the manufacturers. Inverters can last you three to five years and as well as the controllers. So different components have warranties and the lifespan, but you major bulk of the system is the panels and the batteries and they, those can last you over eight to 10 years. Brilliant. Um, another one here from Gregory. Is there a case study of a typical household in TNT where 100% solar has been designed and implemented and its cost? Repeat. Is there any, is there any case study houses that's been done that's 100% off grid? Oh, is, yeah. there any data, is there any data, shareable data available for that? 
Well, I do know of the off-grid house, solar house that UTT design that you can see the production of the wattage for over some years, but we have installed solar systems, off-grid solar systems for individuals, their homes and their residents. You can see some of the data we used in Savannah East, that is one of the lead, um, lead building that has solar systems. And up to this day, they are produced produce over a thousand, a thousand megawatts. So you can find that data online or you can reach out to me and I can share it with you um, via email. Okay, questions are coming in fast, hot and fast. Um, what's the average lifespan of a battery? I think you already answered that. Um, so it all goes on the specific type of batteries, right? Um, yeah. Flooded cells are different from lithium, lithium ion batteries. You get 10 years warranty with lithium ion batteries with these gel lead acid maintainer, the lead maintenance free batteries, you get like around five to eight years. And it all depends on the usage. You overcharge a battery, you use it more, it's gonna shorten its lifespan. And it all depends on you because you're now responsible for your consumption and how you use the system. What would you, what would you recommend as a battery? We, I would recommend the maintenance free, the lead acid and the lithium ion battery once it's affordable for your budget. Okay. What is the typical payback period for a five, K, five kilowatt solar system? Okay, so five kilowatt system, I would have to do that calculation, but payback periods in Trinidad and Tobago are relatively around 10 to 12 years. I think that answers the other question. What would be the estimated payback time for initial investment? So that answers that question. At the um, rate now, it is around 10 to 12 years, okay. mainly because of the battery banks. Um, if they had to eliminate those, then it would have shortened the return on the investments. So do you agree that switching to solar also requires a lifestyle change? Most definitely it is the way how it is that you use your electronics, what you purchase, what you, the systems that you have to have a, a, a management lifestyle, energy management lifestyle. Um, you use automation to assist. Um, you, as they say a long time, well, when we were smaller, you turn off the light, the light switches, you turn off, you turn off everything that is not in use. And it is a definite change in, in lifestyle on when you're switching to solar. Right. Okay, we have time for one more question. Um, guys, feel free to send us an email with any additional questions you have. We'll have Lauren answer it and get it back out to you. Um, typical maintenance requirements for a solar system. I think this is a good one. Well, I was, the solar batteries are maintenance free. Um, panels, you ju it's just like you're cleaning your window because they're glass tempered. So you just wipe it down. Um, if you are afraid of heights, we can all always do it for you. We climb on the roof and do it. <laughs> we do have the maintenance, but this solar system is it's really low maintenance. Right. Right. And one last one. What sort of ballpark investment would you need to be looking at if you wanted a system? With no life, with no lifestyle change. With no lifestyle change, your lifestyle may be different to mine. And if you if you need a lot of air conditioned units and you need a dryers, you would definitely need to start looking at an investment of over a hundred thousand dollars. And where's the bulk of that cost in the batteries? The batteries, most definitely, that energy storage. Nice. Well, we have time for one more question. If anybody else wants to um, drop one in, we, 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 we go to, seven, we go to um, 5.40. Anybody? Yes. Oh. Where do the panels usually come from? Our panels 
are made in, it's German engineered. The most of them are made in USA or in China. Um, it all, it had two different types of solar panels, polycrystalline and monocrystalline. Once we are looking at a standard, we look that we ensure that they are you are listed and they have the certifications that we require because there is a part four in the Trinidad and Tobago Bureau Standards book, and we look looking to have that same certification that they require so we could be in compliance. Excellent. Excellent, Lauren. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge with us. And thanks to everybody for participating. Those are amazing questions. And as I said, feel free to drop us a line if you have any other question. And we will have this webinar up online on our YouTube page. So you could rewatch if you like. And you know, we'll um Anything you need, just send us a send us a line and we'll, you know, we'll be happy to answer it. So Lauren, really, really appreciate you um coming on today. Most definitely. Uh, I, I can see that um, um, solar and the hillside living can merge together. And it definitely, definitely. It, 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 I can't wait. I can't wait for that collaboration. I wish everyone an awesome good day and to think more about solar, be proactive and get ready for that renewable energy transition. And of Excellent. course, check us out at One Solar. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.